My name is Father Martino Choi, and I am the parochial vicar at St. Patrick's Parish in Rockville, Maryland. And yes, the obligatory cheer by which I can identify where my group is sitting. Thank you. And we do have a great youth group. We really do. Um, the youth minister, on the other hand. When the youth minister heard that I was going to be the homilist today, he came into my office. He sat down, and he said, well, Father, good luck. I said, well, thanks. He said, good luck topping Father Mario Mahano's homily. It's like, yo, I got to make this a competition, bro. Now, if you weren't here for that homily a couple years ago, um, or if you forgot, which is totally understandable, it wasn't that great anyway, <laughs> Father Mario shared the story of a woman who courageously chose life in the face of pressures and obstacles. Not once, not twice, but three times. And that was his mother. And he called, her a, he called her a hero. And he's right. She's a hero. And in a way, though, we all need to be heroes. And I guess by showing up here this morning, we are being heroes. I'm sure many of us are running off a couple hours of sleep. Um, many of us probably spent more time on the bus than sleeping. Um, at least it's not a blizzard outside. And yes, it's true that the number of abortions in the United States are declining. But still, the fact is that we are far from where we need to be as a society. We are still ridiculed and labeled and despised because we stand for the sanctity of human life. We're still fighting the battles to protect unborn babies. And so as St. Paul says in today's second reading, we need to make sure that we not conform ourselves to this age, but rather be transformed by the renewal of our minds, standing firm, and what is true and what is good. But while it takes courage to be pro-life, I propose this morning that at the core of what we do today is not courage, but love. It is not courage alone, but love that leads us to proclaim that every human life is valuable from natural conception to natural death. St. Paul talks about this transformation in God, and it's a transformation in charity, in love. After all, as the Apostle John says, God is love. What we do today is we receive God's love, we are transformed by God's love, and we share God's love. I know a woman who went in for her ultrasound and was told by the doctors that the, child, the child's organs were not developing properly, that the child would probably not make it a year after birth, and they recommended abortion. Don't make your kid go through the suffering, they told her. And don't make yourself go through the pain, the suffering of seeing your kid suffer. This, they said about abortion, this is the loving option. But the devil knows how to disguise evil, doesn't he? This disguise, this lie that somehow death is better than life. But it's the lie that defends abortion. It's the lie that promotes physician-assisted suicide. It's the lie that jumps to war as the answer. It's the lie that ignores the problems with capital punishment. But death is never better than life. One of the saddest things that I've encountered as a parish priest is families who have lost a child. Might be a couple months, might be a couple weeks, a couple days after birth. But not a single one of those families comes to me and says, you know what, Father? We wish we hadn't had this child. We wish we hadn't had to suffer through this. None of them say that. No, they all say, thank God. Thank God that we got to love this child, even if it was just for a couple days. And what a pure and intense and intimate and beautiful love that is. One family whose kid never left the hospital. He was born, he was sick. He never, left, he never got to go home. His parents said, that in his three months of life, their son taught them the depths of love and courage that we could not understand before his birth. They were grateful for those three months of life, those three months of love. Death is never better than life. And so love chooses life. And that's what this woman did. She decided that even if this child would only have a year to live, it will be worth it. 
She would do her best to love this child, however long it would live. And so she chose life. And it took courage to do so, to go against the advice of the doctors. But it also took love, true love. And you may have guessed it, this woman is my mother. And I'm that child. You're, you're probably thinking either, man, this is, this is incredible, or you're like, dude, this guy is like totally straight up, shamelessly copying Father Mario's homily. <laughs> but I promise you, this is my story. This is my story. My mother was told to abort me because I would be born with birth defects and that I wouldn't make it a year after birth. But she chose life because she, she chose love. And here I am. And I actually seated next to <laughs> Actually, seated next to my mother is my youngest sister. She doesn't know I'm going to do this, so I'm going to embarrass her as much as I can. <laughs> Say hi, Teresa. <laughs> I am the second of six living children. Okay. The first five of us were born within seven years. Between number five and number six, there are nine years. So talk about a surprise. Talk about unplanned. Talk about a curveball, talk about being an inconvenience. <laughs> but my parents chose life for her too. They chose life for her too. And I'm thankful for them for that as well. I'm thankful to them as well. Now here's the thing though, right? It's not like my parents were capable of some superhuman love or that they had some superhero power. What they had was faith. They turned to God. They turned to his love. They recognized that this life was truly a gift from God, that this life was loved by God. And so it is. Right? Every human life is loved by God. In today's first reading from the prophet Jeremiah, we hear, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Every life is known by God. Every life is loved by God. Every life has a plan from God, a plan uniquely set apart for this child. And every life is precious in the eyes of God because it is capable of such great good. Every life has a role to play in making God's love known. The young man today's gospel. What was his problem? He failed to embrace the plan, the, the good that he was created to accomplish. But Jesus says to him, hey, this is why you were created. This is the plan that was set apart for you. But he couldn't handle it. And he ended up walking away sad. What great good he could have accomplished. What great joy he could have experienced by following Christ. And we all know the statistics, right? 60 million babies aborted in the United States since Roe v. Wade. Who knows what these children could have done, what they could have become if among them we've lost a cure for cancer or the next Michelangelo. It is tremendously sad not to see, as the young man couldn't see, that God knows us and loves us and has a plan for us. But God does know us. He does love us. And he does have a plan for each of us, even those who have not yet seen the light of day. And that is why every life is a gift. That is why every life is precious and valuable. Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI said, each of us is the result of a thought of God. Each of us is willed. Each of us is loved. Each of us is necessary. Do you believe this? Do you believe that you are loved? Do you believe that God has a plan for you? And do you believe that this is true of every single human life? That each and every one of us is loved by God and precious in his eyes? And if we do, 
how can we not stand for life? How can we not love each life as God loves it? Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, St. Paul said. And if I may be so bold as to add to the words of the apostle, not only should we be transformed by God's love, we must then transform the world. We must transform the world through the love that we have experienced, the love that we have witnessed, the love that we profess as Christians, and that is the love that God has for us. God loves us and has a plan for us, and seeing that, we spread the message that every life is loved by God, that every life is loved by us. The abortion industry pretends that it's about choice, but it's really not. Their tactic is forcing this so-called choice through fear. Fear that your future or your plans will be compromised. Fears that others will judge you. Fear that you can't do it. A man came to see me once um, thinking about abortion, afraid because his child had received a poor prenatal diagnosis. And he said to me, Father, I'm afraid. I'm afraid that my wife and I can't love him, that we can't take care of him. And I told him, sir, and I normally don't say sir to people, but I figured it was probably important, sir, you underestimate your ability to love. You underestimate your ability to love. And perhaps I could have added, and you underestimate God's love for your child, God's plan for him. If you believe in God's love for your child, you can love him too. Perfect love casts out fear. And that's our strategy, love. We appeal to God's love for every human life, and we try to make sure that every human life experiences that love. We gather this morning in the context of the holy sacrifice of the Mass and how appropriate that is. In the Eucharist, we remember, we celebrate how Jesus gave his life for us so that freed from sin and death, our lives would have meaning, value, purpose. And Jesus didn't die just for some of us. He died for all of us. So as we celebrate this Mass, giving thanks to to God for the gift of human life. Let us also thank him for the gift of his love. And strengthened and transformed by this encounter of God's love for us, may we go forth and transform the world through our witness to that love. May we learn to love as God loves, to love with that love that makes every human life precious and valuable, deserving of love and protection. Amen.